guys welcome back to star soaps channel how are you today i'm doing good today i'm going to be making my kawa kawa soap kawa kawa is a bush that grows native in new zealand it is also known as the maori pepper plant you can boil it in tea and drink the tea and it's very good for digestion and for your stomach if you have ailments you can make a cream with it, a kawa kawa balm that you can rub on and it is really good for dry skin and for eczema and issues like that. I also make kawa kawa balm and you can use it in a variety of ways medically that is something that's been known by the Maori people for many 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 years that it is just a wonderful plant. So what I do is I dry the kawa kawa leaves and grind them up up and then I've put them inside the soap. I've also infused kawa kawa leaves into the oil that I make the soap from and yeah I also top it with ko-fi seeds because ko-fi trees are also native to New Zealand. So this is a real kiwiana soap. <laughs> Hi guys welcome back to Star Soaps channel. How are you today? I'm doing good. Thank you for sticking around and hanging in there through all these delays. It has been a very trying couple of years, not just for us, I'm sure. Today, we are going to be making Kawa Kawa Soap. That's right, my Kawa Kawa Soap and Kawa Kawa Balm are some of the most popular things I make, and I can never keep them in stock. So today, we're going to re-re-re-re-remake the Kawa Kawa Star Soap. So come along with me. Those of you that have hung in, thank you, and I'll show you how I make it. Squee! Okay, so first things first, we add our cooled lye water to our cooled oils, as we've done many times before. Always straining our lye water just to make sure we catch any yucky bits. Now we're going to bring it to emulsification. Everything is below 30 degrees Celsius or at a nice sort of cool room temperature for soap making. This way I can control trace a little better, which just means I can kind of control how quickly the soap gets thick. And if you're a soap maker, you understand that that's not always the case. There are many, many variables. You could be adding a clay and that might thicken your soap. You might add a certain fragrance oil and that might disagree and it might thicken your soap or worse make it go all chunky and seize it completely but what you learn as a soap maker as you go along is how to attempt to control the soap trace and if you can't you learn how to act quickly and think on your feet <laughs> so ultimately good lessons to learn I'm separating the soap out into different portions here simply to color it the big jug in front of you in the middle has ground kawa kawa leaves with green oxide and I also have some more green oxide mixed up. I have some gold mica mixed up there and of course our white titanium dioxide which simply makes it a lovely white and that stands out so well against the other colours in the final swirl. So I'm going to go ahead and mix everything up and then it'll be time to pour it all in the mould. Now that our soap's ready to go, we will pour it into these beautiful loaf moulds. Each mould produces nine bars of soap, and I think they are a really good shape and size to hold in your hand, and they last for a good amount of time as well. So I've marked off on the boxes that hold my liners where each soap bar will be cut. That just helps me when I'm doing my decoration on the very top of the soap so that when I put it in the cutter and cut all my soap up, I'm not going to cut through any of those beautiful things that I pop on the top. Make sure that I do a little bit for each top of each bar, if that makes sense. So I go ahead and I pour all of my kawakawa infused soap with the uh, kawakawa, dried kawakawa leaves that are ground up in there. Every single portion of soap is in fact infused with kawakawa because the oils that went into the base are kawakawa infused. But that first layer has the actual leaves ground up in. 
then I pour a little bit of my white soap in with my green there just to create a fun swirl and now it's time to pour some white into the loaf. I'm being careful to pour the first lot so that it sinks down within the soap and then the second lot of white I'll be very careful to pour along the very top. The reason I'm doing this is so that I will hopefully have a nice design all the way through my soap bar instead of just having swirls at say the top of the bar I'm hoping to actually have them going all the way through the whole soap. <laughs> That's the plan anyway. So I pour very carefully at the surface here to get this white to sit on top. And because my soap is so thin, at a very thin trace, that's a bit difficult to do. But at the same time, that thin trace is what makes being able to swirl like this possible. This particular swirl is sort of pointless because I'm just going to cover it up with more soap. But I, I'm sort of showing you here just how beautifully it swirls when it's at this thin trace. I absolutely adore this. It makes me feel like a real artist. <laughs> She's a winner Don't take second bed Or sit in the back seat And drive like the Yeah. Oh. 
So I finish off the soap by doing a mantra swirl on the very top. And then I go ahead and I put a special little collection of three Kofi seeds on the very top of each bar of soap. This doesn't really add much. I mean, it might give you a little bit of exfoliating when you rub it against your skin, but it does really look beautiful, as you can see here on the final set soap. I've also added some little soap leaves that I made out of soap dough there. And now it's time for us to cut these bad boys up and see what we got. I'm pretty excited. Because the soap is still soft, I'm able to take these thin end slices and squish them together and that makes a lovely little bit of soap for us to use to wash our hands with out here in the laundry. Waste nothing. <laughs> wow, I absolutely love how that final swirl has come out. That gold has actually come out quite golden looking, which is rare. It's very hard for me to find a gold mica that actually looks gold. And I just love how that green and white swirl has come out. It makes me think of the ocean and sea foam. And it's just beautiful, especially up against that background with all of the little speckles of kawakawa leaf. This is a fantastic design. I'm extremely happy how this has come out. What a beautiful soap. <laughs> well, I truly do hope that you guys have enjoyed watching me make this soap. It is scented with a custom blend of essential oils. Um, it reminds me sort of of a light scent of fresh cut grass, but very more like a bush walk, earthy, sort of mossy. <laughs> very, very nice. And in the final soap, it's light, but it is so refreshing and cleansing. A really great scent. So I love that. And it seems to complement the Kawakawa as it is sort of um, a native vibe, that the, the bush, going bush, it makes you feel, you know, I do, I feel connected to the spirit of our land here in Aotearoa. So I hope that I can honour that a little bit through the soap. <laughs> I'm sorry it has taken me so long to get this soap making video out to you. Thank you for being patient and hanging in there with me. I truly hope to pick up the pace and get back into creating and posting soap more often. And in the meantime, if you want to head on over to TikTok, you can find me there at Miss Crystal Star. I'm creating almost every day fun, silly videos and singing my heart out. So I would truly love for you to come in and check me out over there as well if you want to. Thanks again, guys. I love you so much, my Star Soapy family. And feel the soapy love. <laughs> and I'll see you guys next time. Just remember to love each other. Be kind to one another. Pay it forward if and when you can. Everybody's struggling and everybody's going through it right now. So if we can just love each other and be there for each other. Truly I don't think anyone could ask more of us. Thanks again, guys. I love you all so much. And I'll catch you next time. Bye.